Hey guys, so this is going to be a guide on how to play this Calviat deck, which is all about thinning uh, to get a big Siri dash in round 3 alongside Bork, Vern Trettenmuth, and beat your opponent's big minions basically. And you're doing that through cycling with the Alchemist and Foot Soldier combo, along with Albert Pikeman in round 1. They all pop out your deck. And then of course Calviat ability, a bit of Cantarella as well, and uh, of course the Mulligans. So yeah. Uh, I'll jump into some gameplay and basically show show you what you're supposed to be doing with this. Should be good. We're in a game now. It's full test. It's a Turing machine so I can talk through the mulligan. Uh, and should be good. Okay. So basically the cards we don't want here are pikemen, more than one. We don't want more than one usually. Uh, Imperial golems obviously and roach. So we're going to start with blacklisting pikemen this time around. Usually if you have a golem you want to blacklist that first so you don't draw more of them. But here it's fine to blacklist the pikemen. Uh, so we don't draw any more, because we only want one. If your opponent's running removal, for example, if they're Radovid, um, you might consider having two in hand just to pop the second one out, get that thinning going anyway, even if they remove it. Uh, we're going to get rid of Roach now after that. We have the dash, which is really nice to have in round one. And then Foot Soldiers are great. We probably have to end the mulligan here, because we haven't blacklisted Imperial Golems, so we don't want to draw any of those in the mulligan there. And this hand should be workable. We'll probably do something funky with this. So the first play usually is going to be Alba Pikeman on the back row. You want to do them here because they're going to go up to 15 strength when they all come out, which isn't vulnerable to Igni. And then the only other back row players I see here, which you're not using in round one, where is she? Here she is. Here she is. You're not going to use this round one most of the time. And then you can play a four like Roach or the Nausicaa on the back row, and it's still not vulnerable to Igni. Uh, whereas you do have other players on front and obviously middle with the Alchemists and Foot Soldiers. So if you play these on another row, it will be vulnerable. So you want to play his back row every time. Next, we're just going to drop dash. Player on front row to play around Igni again. We don't want it to, you know, mess stuff up with the alchemists getting Igni'd. Roach pops on, on this row, which is cool. So now that we've got Roach and a pikeman out, it's going to make our Calviet a lot more reliably good. So we're going to do that now. Get the golems out as well. This is where the thinning comes uh, into, you know, into fruition. We can play probably Peter. Doesn't really matter. None of these cards are particularly great. Uh, and they won't be in the future, so just Peter should be fine. We can just buff this guy up. He'll protect the guy, the uh, the other pikeman from Igni. If we ever want to play uh, more on the back row, which probably won't, but it shouldn't matter too much. So now the game plan is basically just thin the thin the deck, do some big uh, point plays in round one. Like we have very mu like a huge amount of tempo because of the uh, the pikeman popping out along with the Calviat ability and these are 12 strength alchemist foot soldier combos that we're pulling off every time and since you know what you're going to get with the Calviat ability uh, you can decide whether it's safe to use alchemist or alvalac or another draw tool like cantarella to uh, cycle your deck because if there are bad cards on top which are shown by Calviat then you really don't want to draw those um, so we've thinned a lot, we're ahead in tempo, we're card up, we should probably just pass here Card advantage with the deck is very important because you're running Bork and Igni, and these cards are very, uh, very key to surprise your opponent with in round three. If they have card advantage, you're kind of just going to get screwed over by them having a spy or something into the Igni a lot of the a lot of the time. Here we're just going to mulligan a Nausicaa because you know why not? Nausicaas are kind of bad here. They're really good against weather, but you probably don't, you know, you don't want to be running. You don't want to be having those in hand against non-weather opponents. So we won the round, a whole card up, that's pretty easy. We'll just drop a dash. And usually you want to play the dash round two, it can depend on the situation. Like if you want card advantage even more than a bigger dash, you maybe don't play it. The thing is she's a 12 point play which is very hard to beat uh, if your opponent has no carryover. So you can just drop her a lot of the time and then uh, pass straight after that. And I think that's what we'll do here. We guarantee even more card advantage which is going to be great alongside Bork. And we'll get to choose when we uh, when we do that. Let's go into the round three now. And you know, we haven't thinned hugely with the foot soldiers. He ate one with the Regis. It's kind of annoying. And we get the standard bearer again. We're mulligan it again. We might not be able to find the dash now, but it's kind of fine. A lot of the time you don't actually need her round three. And you know, we've been a bit unlucky with the draws here. Not getting the foot soldiers, you know, because he ate one. Uh, not finding Avalak. I mean, we could try to do that, but you know, at the end of the day, there's not much point. So I think we're just going to Bork first card. You can do this sometimes. O obviously, this match doesn't really matter because it's against the, the AI. Usually, we want to save Bork for last three cards and throw it out then, but... Um, yeah, we'll 
we'll see. Let's lock these because they're crewmen, why not? Why not lock them? Uh, basically, your round three is you're usually looking for a short round three or a longish one with um, sort of Cantarella to to use with alongside the Bork. It's probably not a good idea to use Cantarella here, but whatever. Since these are sevens and they're going to get hit by it anyway, but you know it's all good. It's all good. And usually you're looking to have a twelve or fifteen Siri dash alongside this Bork, all the gold strength that they can't interact with, and then you can also drop an Igni in the last round if you have it. I uh, usually want to use Igni round 1 though. And Asir is going to be putting Roach back in the deck. Alongside, well it doesn't really matter what, what else. Doesn't really matter. There's a Scorch. I you know, we don't have any foot soldiers so we just have to reveal his cards, unfortunately. It's a dead Royal Decree. Yeah, hopefully that uh, helps you like understand the mulligan a bit better. And yeah, basically the the general game plan of the deck. Obviously, you're going to require practice with it to you know to work out what it's doing uh, in certain matchups and all the rest of it. But you know, hopefully that was a a little quick quick uh, quick guide for you guys. Hope you enjoy. I'll be streaming on on Twitch if you want to learn how to play the deck more. So yeah, see you guys.